Internet. What up, Internet? What's going on? It's Friday. It's Friday morning, very early, and I'm editing the video from what's been going on so far in the last couple days. Um, there's been a bunch of stuff that's been going on uh, that I've been working on the build out to get going here. As you can see, I'm outside the shop uh, throwing down uh, a new footer on this side of the building that uh, um, as I excavated um, some of this old building here, uh, foundations a long time ago were built to hold like, you know, a Model T <laughs> that weighed basically nothing. I think I think a big portion of the Model T was made out of horsehair, I think the body or something. Uh, but they weighed virtually nothing. So um, this is something that's pretty important to take a look at when uh, doing anything in an old building. If you're going to add a lot of weight to it, always excavate the uh, foundation to see what's going on. And as I did the demo on the inside, I could see that there was rot and some stuff happening um, as far as in relation to the foundation. So what the framing that's on this building is, is considered a, a floating frame or whatever. So they poured a slab and then they set the framing into the side of the slab. So it's kind of just like floating above the ground, which means there's not a whole lot of structural support to the actual wall if uh, there was some kind of failure on the side here, which could be an issue when I add a 2,000 pound uh, aquarium to the <laughs> side of the building. Um, so this is the first... A uh, little footer that I've added down here in the in the base. Uh, obviously, the camera angle doesn't really um, do great justice to give you an idea of exactly how deep the um, this footer is going to be. But uh, I went down um, over over 20 inch, and then uh, poured a couple bags here, and then I've got two more concrete pours to do to uh, tie this in and keep it. Um, you know, solid enough to uh, hold a big tank in there. Um, but it has been coming along, and the next video, um, I'll have, I'll show you some uh, some video of the next pours that were done um, to shore this up. And then you can kind of see uh, in my in the left hand corner there, there's a PVC pipe sticking down. This is where the uh, this is where the electrical is going to run into the building. Um, as, as I mentioned in one of the earlier videos, there's one hanging wire running power to the shop that was actually a split a split wire a 16 gauge really thin wire that only was running one outlet and two light bulbs uh, to this shop and I was actually surprised to find out that no one even upgraded anything uh, as far as the electrical went over the 93 years that this building has been here I figured somebody would have gotten excited about having more uh, power in the shop at some point in time and uh, Pardon my voice. My voice is uh, kind of jacked this morning. I sound, <laughs> sound like I've been chewing on gravel, uh, but I've been running pretty hard, so that's kind of why my voice is all crazy, so sorry about that. Uh, there's that inside wall I was talking about. That's where the uh, the footer has gone underneath, and uh, the concrete's getting poured in uh, from the outside. And uh, so these studs here are on 24 inches. The, the actual wall studs are 24 inches apart. And the joists um, and the ceiling are 48 inches apart. So this is going to be a big problem um, as we move along. But I do have all the lumber to uh, repair this and get it going. Um, when you encounter like a 24-inch joist like this, you would think, oh, hey, we got to rip these out and go ahead and, and put them on 16-inch um, on, on center. But the math makes that insane if you want to either add in the 16 inch ones you're gonna like run in it's gonna be weird so the easiest way to do this is just to use a 2x4 and um, slap them together and that the joining of those two studs with the new one and the old one will give you enough structural support that you don't have to worry about the building falling over <laughs> anymore um, and then in the corner there I need to add uh, one and one uh, to each side opposite of uh, what was kind of a fabricated 4x4 in the corner um, which was a couple of studs that they put together and um, we'll get to some of the um, in a later video we'll get to some of the interesting things that they did as far as um, you know that kind of old school construction stuff where <laughs> it's just like there's certain things that you just look at and you're like 
man, maybe that seemed like a good idea at the time, but uh, but they, I don't know if they'd never really ever had the 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 long run of a building falling over because of uh, how they put stuff together. But um, as I got all these studs in, then um, that'll be shored up. But uh, I encountered a problem yesterday once I got to the door area. I realized that the whole threshold for the door and everything was completely rotted out, so I ended up having to pull that out. And I haven't quite got the um, uh, framing around the door done yet because I had to do the bottom, uh, the base, the uh, kick plate, whatever you want to call it, um, underneath. Uh, basically, where you, you open the door, that part that you walk over uh, to come in through the step, the threshold there, um, was completely rotted out and needed to be replaced. Uh, but that'll, uh, I don't know if that'll be in a later video because I, uh, I think my camera, um, my card was full, which is like the worst thing ever to like walk over to your camera and go like, oh, we got to move the camera and it's like card full. Oh crap. And the other one is a uh, hundred miles away. So I, uh, just had to keep working and, uh, not videoing, but here's the, uh, the trench run. I know there's so many people that love, uh, uh, watching me dig a trench so i had to put this in here <laughs> my most least least popular videos is me digging trenches so uh of course i had to throw that in but this is a uh this is a 30 inch deep trench so at the 30 inch level there will be uh the power running i'm running a basically a heavy heavy six gauge um outdoor wire inside of a conduit I'm running a three-quarter inch conduit uh, schedule 40 down here all the way down 30 inches deep into the ground which doesn't seem that deep uh, until you actually start digging that deep um, the first 12 inches was super easy everything under under that was like I feel like I was on that gold rush show like I'd hit bedrock you know um, and uh, a ton of old roots and stuff from uh, trees that had been uh, long since felled um, where I regularly encountered those as you can see me kind of <laughs> getting out my saws all to cut out these giant uh, roots that were um, in the ground but at that 30 inch will be the power then six inches above that I'm going to be off to the left or right whichever direction I'm going to go uh, will be uh, the water running through here and then I'm also going to run a network cable six inches above that um, now the code in, the code in my area says I can bury anything in the ground as long as I'm uh, at that 24 inch mark and and below um, so the uh, the code in the area says that I can just uh, bury whatever I want as long as it's deep enough and so that's why we ended up doing that plus uh, if I run a single trench like that then I can you know come up towards the uh, you know up towards ground level and add the other utilities that I want because I want them to all be in the same area so we know where not to dig or uh, you know put in a fence post or anything like that and um, we'll know in the future and I'll just have it marked off and then we'll so that was a uh, overall it is a 56 foot trench <laughs> so <laughs> not the longest trench in the world uh, but not the shortest in the trench uh, trench world either um, but we got it done I ended up hand digging everything we didn't we thought we were gonna rent a uh, uh, it's not a ditch witch a ditch witch is a little excavator but uh, a, it's you know a machine that would dig that ditch for us uh, and it just schedule wise it just wasn't gonna work out so um, ended up just uh, using my muscles and, uh, and some shovels and going crazy get that dug but it is completely dug and I'm, I'm laying in the conduit uh, basically as we speak and uh, so that is going very well and we'll be uh, doing some of the electrical coming along um, very soon we're getting all that in and then we'll be throwing in a sub panel for the uh, electrical in the shop here uh, moving forward and I'll highlight some of that stuff uh, and wiring that up wiring all the outlets so that all the fish tanks are all on one uh, one loop um, so we can monitor how much power we're using all that kind of stuff and then um, you know all the shop tools and stuff will be on another loop the lights will be on another loop and uh, you know it'll all make sense in time right now we're uh, uh, right now I'm putting up the wall here so now you can see how big the room is gonna be this this will be the wall on the left hand side 
um, which uh, currently is only eight feet long coming out from the wall, but there will be another one uh, strapped in and, and tacked to this, and then we'll be hanging the uh, ceiling joists um, and all that stuff. But, you know, I'm at the framing point now, and things just really start speeding up. Um, even though it's been a couple of days of, uh, of kind of harebrained problem solving, like, you know, finding out, oh, crap, this door is going to fall out of here um, and getting that kind of stuff done. But the, uh, the strike plate down here um, worked out exactly, you know, as expected, how it was supposed to with the pressure treat. You always want to have pressure treat where you're going to be hitting um, a concrete floor of any kind, whether a floor or a wall concrete that has... Uh, the earth underneath it you always want to have a pressure treat plate underneath it yeah it's a it's an extra step and it's a bit of a pain in the butt um, as far as extra steps go instead of just firing it straight into the um, you know framing a wall and then firing it straight into the concrete um, that is much easier but in the long run um, which could be very rapid in uh, the area I live in in the Pacific Northwest it could rot out and you have your whole wall come down um, really quickly um, around here. You would think, oh yeah, that would be cool for a couple of years. It, it could be six months and that thing could be, you know, having issues because it is super wet around here. But we're getting up to the end of the video for today. Um, so I like to do a little bit of business here at the end. Uh, head to darkstararts.com and use the Amazon banner to uh, go to Amazon and buy whatever you're going to buy. It gives us a little bit of an advertising kickback. It just... Um, it's just the the way to support the channel and what's going on here and uh, the uh, fish room build if you guys go there um, or you just end up giving it to some other corporation or whatever um, otherwise it goes to us and you just buy whatever you want it doesn't charge you anything and uh, so that's what's going on today happy friday to everybody and uh, i guess have a good weekend later